Anyone who enjoys Spanish cooking is familiar with the delicate flavor of saffron. Saffron comes from a crocus, crocus sativus, which is called the saffron crocus. And this is a fall blooming relative of the more familiar spring blooming crocus that marks the beginning of springtime for us. Now, when we use saffron for cooking, it's a very expensive spice. And the reason for that is the part of the plant that we're harvesting. And if we peel back, this is a rain lily, but the parts of it are large enough that we can see. If we peel back the petals and look inside, we'll see some yellow portions. And these are the anthers, which hold the pollen. And at the center, there's a long white tube. And that tube is called the style. At the end of the style, is the stigma and this is a sticky portion where the pollen lands and collects on the end and that'll be moved in down the style to pollinate the flower. Now on the saffron crocus along that style there's three reddish uh, filaments and those little lobes are the part of the plant that's harvested for the spice. Just those three little lobes and it takes 70,000 saffron flowers to collect just one pound of saffron spice. And that's why it is such an expensive herb. Now, to plant saffron, we have a really good location for this. Saffron's hardy in between zones six and nine. It likes really hot, sunny locations. It also likes to be dry. Its life cycle's interesting. It will appear in the early fall, very late summer, usually around September you'll start to see the petals, uh, the leaves and, and flowers emerge. Um, but in the summertime, it goes dormant and it likes to be dry when it's in that dormant phase. And that can be difficult if you're planting it in with other flowers. So I've looked through our edible ornamental garden trying to find the perfect location for saffron and I've settled on the top of this berm. And I'm planting it among some other Mediterranean herbs that also like drier conditions. So my hope is that during the summer, the dormant season for saffron, we will be able to avoid uh, rotting those bulbs from excess water by relying on the really good drainage of our raised berm, and then also the fact that we're not gonna have to irrigate as much for the plants surrounding it. So I wanna start to plant our saffron, and it's a corm. You can see here, it looks a lot like a bulb, but it's biologically a little bit different. The flat side is going to be pushed down, that's where the roots will come up. We're gonna place that down. And then the more pointed tip will face up. And I like to plant these uh, in little clumps the way I would plant tulips where they'll come up together. And this is a pretty small corm. We're gonna plant it two to three inches deep. And that, when we say that, that means two to three inches of soil on top of it. So we probably wanna dig closer to a four inch hole. And then we're gonna space them uh, about equally. We want to space them two to three inches apart. Um, I'm going to do a little clump of five here. If I were planting um, per square foot, that would be about 10 bulbs per square foot. That gives you an idea of how many you might want. Again, we want to put them two to three inches deep and make sure that we maintain the proper orientation of our bulbs. Well, this is a fall blooming flower and it's going to bloom for us this year. It'll send up some strap-like leaves, very similar to the spring blooming crocus that we're very familiar with. And these can reach a height of one foot, but the flower uh, is about a one inch flower and it just sits right above the surface of the soil, about an inch above. So it's kind of an interesting uh, architecture to the plant. And we can expect those to bloom for us. We'll probably get them in about November since we're putting these in a little bit late. You wanna water your bulbs in right away, but then don't water them until you see those leaves emerge. Now, the one thing about crocus is that these bulbs are going, or the corms are going to reproduce and form more little corms on top of it. And the plants will actually flower better if we regularly divide those. So we wanna dig them up about every two years and divide them and replant the corms immediately. And we do this in May to June, uh, just before the, the dormant period. Mm -hmm.